Okay, folks, good morning and welcome to Swing Trading Today. This is Bob Desmond, and it is 5.30 in the a.m. Eastern Standard Time, the 19th of November. There seems to be a little bit of confusion about market wrap, which I put up a couple of times so far this week in uh, the evenings, talking about uh, the day's events. And I put up the podcast, which is free. And there is a member's version which gets emailed out that has video on it because I got a couple of inquiries about where's the video. If you're a member, you, you have access to it. All you need to do is to go to the members area and or click the link that was sent out to you via email and you get access to the audio video version. So the, the one that's posted on YouTube with a picture of me on it, usually... I think last night's went out blank. It had no. Uh, it was just a black screen. That's the podcast because we're now on iTunes and Google. So members, again, uh, check the members area. Check your inbox. Uh, there's a link that was sent out, and you should have access to the full audio video version. Uh, let me know if there are any issues with that. All right, let's get to the pre market activity. We're going to kick things off with uh, what's coming out today. Today's Thursday. Uh, jobless claims. They could knock the market down. They could boost the market up one of the two, uh, but very influential, unlike prior to the COVID outbreak. Uh, we're, we're seeing more and more nefarious activity get uncovered in Georgia. Uh, potential election fraud with the Dominion machines and foreign interference in our elections. And today we have a bit of news out of M5, that M5 is the British Intelligence Service, and they may have some involvement. So things are unraveling here, and it's really quite, again, Orwellian. This talk of a great reset. At some point in time, it's going to have an impact. People happen to like this country. And these, I don't know, these Bond villains, I'm going to call them Bond villains, that are coming out, whether it be Justin Trudeau with their talk of a utopian society they're out of their mother effing minds if they think that the american people are going to stand for this so it, it's going to be a crazy new year I, I i don't know how else to put it i've never seen anything in all my years in this country anyway so let's begin with the dollar which is shockingly up and we're putting in higher lows here uh, you know do we break out you know we could but we did that back here it failed we did that back here, it failed. The dollar's weak overall. This morning, it's strong, but overall, the macro view, let's go to a weekly chart. Weekly chart, lower highs, lower lows. Maybe we do have a higher low here on a weekly time frame. We won't know until we get a breakout. So right now, we remain negative on the dollar and gives, until it gives us reason to get positive on the dollar. Longer term, the daily chart, you know, we had a bullish reversal bar yesterday. Uh, today we're up new daily high. You know, so it's probably going to be an up day for the dollar. Gold is getting whacked. Down $17 per share. We are breaking down below. This is a 5 a.m. bar. It opened up just over a half hour ago. Uh, we are threatening to break a lower band of support. Actually, this is a daily chart. Let's go to a four-hour chart. All right, so we already have broken down below that support level. Uh, so gold's in a lot of trouble here. It's weak and getting weaker, and I'm kind of surprised given the strength in Bitcoin. But if you, know, if you put a lot of faith in seasonality, well, then gold is doing what it should be doing this period of time. Oil, down about a half percentage point this morning. Uh, even more, I'm sorry, one and a half percent this morning. Now, we sold half of our energy position in ExxonMobil yesterday. We made profits real there. We did add to shorts in our, of the Qs and open up a short position on the Russell 2000. So we'll see whether or not we want to close out those trades. Let's go to equity, see how we're poised to open. Let's begin with the Russell 2000. The Russell is coming off the lows. We're down about a half percentage point. We did break a support level yesterday. Let's highlight this. And there you have it. So there's our break of support. 
on a four hour time frame. RSI, lower highs, lower lows. The NASDAQ 100 down spot 42%. Uh, no support level broken per se, but we do have the potential for a lower high on a four hour time frame. So this is not broken yet. However, it is under pressure. Let's check out the Dow, down 105 points or about a third of a percentage point. Now here we did break support yesterday. We are coming off the lows at current. Take a quick peek at silver. Silver is very weak, down over 2% on the session. So commodity prices under pressure due to dollar rally. The markets are confused at current. This time of year, they should be doing well. They have been doing well. But the headline risks, folks, are beginning to mount. Simply look at these headlines coming out of Germany. We the people. They're spraying water cannons on these people because they don't want to be locked down. This is coming here soon. Just as the second wave, quote-unquote second wave of COVID began in Europe, as did the first wave and made its way into the United States, so too will the societal unrest. Especially with... An election which is undecided and it appears as though some nefarious activities going on and nobody, even on the Republican side, nobody wants to do anything about it. And you get this guy, we're seeing his face more and more, Klaus Schwab. The Great Reset Mastermind suggests risk assessment, brain scans before allowing travel. So can you imagine these morons in government, those who could not cope with the private sector, certainly not everyone, but a lot of them. These are the people who had to latch onto the teat of government to make a living. And now they're gonna make <laughs> they're gonna make decisions about brain scans before travel. And I don't know who this Klaus Schwab is, but he it, tell me this guy doesn't look like a Bond villain. This is off a of zero hedge. All right, as we leave off here, I'm gonna go over two stocks that were requested. One was from Larry yesterday. Larry, I apologize if you're listening right now. I uh, just saw your your request for Riley. I didn't see it yesterday in the box, so my apologies, but I will go over it this morning. Uh, Nikola is up first. So far this month is a monthly chart. Bullish reversal bar on the month. You can see the VWAP in yellow here, volume-weighted moving average, acting as a lower band of support. Weekly chart. We recaptured support last week, followed through this week. So the technicals are looking good here. and I'm not a big follower of the news out of this company, but I know it hasn't been wonderful. So I would really caution, do you due diligence here before entering? I'm just speaking to the technicals. I have zero opinion on the company and their business model. So we do have a breakout on the week. Very nice daily chart. Uh, we broke out yesterday. We are leaning into the third standard deviation, Bollinger Band. That doesn't mean we can't go higher. I think we probably will. Uh, very, very tight Bollinger Bands. So the setup here for a Bollinger Band squeeze is it's the stage is set. And it appears as though it's already begun. So it looks as though the path of least resistance, assuming that the market holds up, is to the upside. So bullish. RSI putting in higher lows and higher highs. B. Riley Financial. Never heard of him. I think this is going to be O'Reilly Auto Parts. All right, so this is the value of Trend Spider. I'm going to take these automated trend lines off. You would think I would have automatically started here with my manual trend lines and said, okay, this is looking really good, right? However, when you click the automated trend lines, take a look. You have resistance above. So just beware here. I think that it's a buy. It could be bought on any pullback. But on a continuation move higher, we have resistance at around 33.21. So a couple of dollars away. Then we have resistance above that level with a 34 to $35 handle. Weekly chart. I think we have more room to run here. A little bit of a topping tail. Uh, your top, yeah, topping tail yesterday. And that's okay. The market faded, taking Riley down a little bit. RSI, higher lows, higher highs. Daily chart. Yeah, there's the fade yesterday. But it still eked out a gain. So the daily chart still looks bullish. Let's overlay the monthly resistance levels. You can see here's your resistance in dashed line on a monthly time frame on top of a daily chart. We have seasonality going back to 2009. Uh, traditionally a favorable period of time in November, up around 58% of the time. Drops down a little bit in uh, December, but really spikes up higher in January to 64%. So tis the season to be long of Riley. It looks good here. 
from a technical and seasonal perspective. Just keep in mind, you do have some resistance up and around 33.44, then a 34 handle, then a 35 handle. And with that, folks, everybody have a profitable trading day. If you want the video version of Market Wrap, become a member. 14-day free trial offer. Fire me at any time. Be well.